Ends us receiving here. And out of the end zone, it's Logan. And he's going to be brought down right around the 20 yard line. It'll be first and 10. The Sooners today, especially the secondary, Kansas going to run it on first down. Devin Neal with about a yard on the play. Stutzman making the stop. Tackling Robert, an issue for the Sooners. Yes, and trust me, B. John Robinson right there breaking all these tackles. There's not many backs like him in the country, but Oklahoma has to learn how to tackle and make take advantage of a team like Kansas who, honestly, today is going to have to play their best ball all year to get a win. Quarterback Jason Bean, the transfer from North Texas. Starting quarterback, 6'3", junior, completing 55% of his passes. You'll see them run the play clock down, be very methodical. They'll run it again, Devin Neal, little or no gain on the play. Deshaun White making the stop. Lance Leipold, the first-year head coach, trying to flip the culture here at Kansas. They practiced hard this week. There's a good vibe on the sidelines, he says, and they practiced well. But a daunting task ahead for the Jayhawks. Third down and eight coming up. Mason Fairchild sets. Bean passing complete for the first down. Forward progress going to be beyond that marker. Kwame Lassiter making the catch. His 22nd of the season working against Billy Bowman. Lincoln Riley in his fifth season for Oklahoma. The Sooners looking for their first 8-0 start since 2004. And despite the fact that, Robert, they're 7-0, you'd never be able to tell when you listen to the coaching staff, right? No, not from the uh, <laughs> meetings that we had this week. They're very upset. They have a standard that they want to live up to, and they don't feel like they have done that on either side of the ball consistently enough. So these Oklahoma Sooners could be pretty angry, and they're looking to take it out on these Kansas Jay Jayhawks. Jayhawks move the sticks. A little reverse here. Toss. It's McBride with a nice gain of about seven, maybe eight. Jaden Davis making the tackle for the Sooners. Jason Bean with a nice uh, little bit of uh, handiwork here. Selling the fakes. Yeah. Hands it off. Five touchdown passes on the season against four interceptions. Yeah, Jason Bean's been in a little bit of a pressure cooker over the past couple of weeks. He started the season off pretty well, but he only had 86 passing yards last week. So that third down conversion that they had just a couple plays ago was big for his development and his confidence. He's taking a little bit of a step backwards the last couple of weeks. He's going to run it himself here. Gets the first down and hauled down by his jersey by Asamoa. Five-yard gain. Quinn? Great start for Kansas. You know, this game's all about little victories for this Jayhawk program, whether it's a third down conversion, an extended possession, winning a quarter. They're not going to judge themselves ultimately maybe by the final score, but they're going to judge themselves by the little victories that they can pick up along the way. That's going to be a penalty up front. You know, the Jayhawks are quick to tell everyone willing to listen that Wins haven't caught up with the culture that they are rebuilding here. Offside, number 90. Defense, jumped into the neutral zone, causing the offense player to react. Five-yard penalty. That's, First down. That's against Josh Ellison for the Sooners. As we were talking about the wins, right? The wins haven't, and the results haven't caught up to the culture. They don't believe they have a losing culture. And I can tell you right now, when you're trying to build a program, it takes time and patience. You have to teach a program how to win. And I went through that at Baylor, and, and hopefully we can see them continue to make those strides today as they face a daunting task against the Sooners. First down and five. They hand it off again. A little reverse action. Trevor Wilson, one of the more potent and dangerous players offensively. Key Lawrence making the stop on the play. Speaking of keys, Robert? Yes, we talked about it. Short in the game. Kansas needs to do that. They're going to run the clock down, try to keep Oklahoma off the field. No arrested development. Caleb Williams, you got to continue to develop and show that you're the guy. And then tackling for both teams is going to be paramount today. Second and three and another penalty up front. By the way, I like that 
Arrested Development. Hey, man. <laughs> I knew you was going to pick up on that one. One of my favorites. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas and Winfrey moving. Offside, number 95. Defense, five-yard penalty results in a first down. Isaiah Thomas moving up front. Mm. Leads the team in sacks. A little overzealous that time. He got him twice right there. Sure did. Look, he got him on the first one. Uh, don't go. Don't go. Bow. Got him again. Great use of the snap count there by Jason Bean. Robert, you talked about shortening the game. What does it look like on the field? Yes, when you talk about shortening the game, it's not just running the clock down. It's also about putting drives together. That okay. third down conversion earlier, the first down they just got. When you do that, you keep Oklahoma's dynamic offense off the field. Time out on the field, everything is off. Oh, boy. We got a power hit. Oh, no. <laughs> is this a Super Bowl? Cute. Someone paying their light bills or not down there? Kansas looking at first down and 10 from the Oklahoma 45 as we resume play. Devin Neal in a tailback. Hey, man, you can't let a few lights get in the way of a good game, right? <laughs> Bean keeps it with an RPO and crosses the 40, brought down at about the 39 by Aguebu. Second down and about four to go. It's Oklahoma defense with just three interceptions all season. Second and four. You just saw in that last play, Jason Bean using his legs. We talked to the coaches this week, and they said, hey, we want to get him out on the perimeter more so he can utilize his full skill set. And uh, I think they did that right there. Let's see if they continue to do that moving forward. He handed off again to Devin Neal. It's going to set up a third down at about two to go. Aguebo again making the tackle. What's it like playing without a play clock, Robert, as quarterback? And you can't look over there and see how much time is exactly left. Well, I wonder how good of a relationship he has with the head ref there, because, you know, maybe <laughs> if the clock's running a little low, he can just say, hey, man, give me five more seconds. I'm trying to run the clock down a little bit more. But it does affect you a little bit. But at the end of the day, uh, somebody on the sideline is probably okay. keeping the time for the quarterback so he knows how much time he has to make the, the calls and make the adjustments that they have to do. Because that's a big part of their strategy today, right? Without a doubt. Third down and one. Lassiter in motion. They're going to run it and pick up the first down. Across the 35, down to the 33, the local product, Devin Neal, the team's leading rusher coming into the ballgame this afternoon. The guy that coaches say is very coachable, very willing to learn. A charismatic, magnetic type of personality inside that locker room. Not only that, Devin Neal is a two-sport athlete, right? He plays outfitter for the baseball team, and he's a guy that really has bought in to Coach Leipold's philosophy and belief in this system. Tenth play of the drive coming up. They run it between the tackles inside the 30 to the 29. Key Lawrence making the tackle. Quinn. Well, with the, with, with the scoreboard and clock out right now, the side judge, Fulton Carson, is effectively the, the, the human scoreboard. He's at the lower left five-yard line right now, so he's got the clock. I'm going to swing around over to him in a second to see how much time's left in this first quarter. All right, Q. Hey, you never know, Q. Maybe he'll let you keep the time. <laughs> <laughs> Second and seven. They're going to run it all the way down. Hand it off again to Devin Neal, Isaiah Cole. Two-yard pickup on the play. I'm going to start keeping. Yeah, hey, Mark, I'm just gonna say, how, do you, how do you know they ran it all the way down? Because this rollie costs a lot of money oh, on my wrist. Rolly, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can't see time. anything up here. I can multitask. That is true. That is true. <laughs> This is the but to get back to the game. This is the perfect beginning to the game for Kansas. They're they're keeping the drive going. How do you keep the spark of an offense off off the field? Just keep that Oklahoma defense on and keep getting first downs. Number 28. 7:26 to go in the first quarter. Kansas eating up clock on this opening drive, competing and completing another pass to Lassiter. His second reception. Bowman in on the coverage. 
Wow, this drive has been awesome. Kwame Lassiter's Kansas leading receiver right now. Jason Bean is looking like a different kind of guy right now. Following the script perfectly. Oh! What was that? Asamoah. That's their Offside, third. Number 24, defense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Alex Grinch has got to be a little bit upset with his defense right now. Oh my goodness, Brian Asamoah. What are these? What do we got to call him? Wait, Samoa? You got to wait, man. You got to let him stop the ball before you do that, buddy. Oklahoma's just all over the place right now. From the 15, first and five. Lassiter sets. He pulls it out, keeps it himself. Got a blocker. And he ran out of bounds. It appeared as though he could have cut it into the end zone, Robert. What is he doing? At the one yard line, unless he's trying to run down clock. Jason which would Bean, be... <laughs> they do the little the QB zone read and he's running. And I'm sitting here saying, bro, what are you doing? Come on, man. Look at this. He just runs out of bounds. I don't quite understand what he was just doing there. That... But listen, it was a big play. 6-10 to go in the first quarter. Maybe he knows something that we don't. That was a strange play with him running out of bounds when it appeared he could have scored. First and goal. Well, there's the touchdown. Devin Neal doing the honors. And the Jayhawks couldn't have scripted. Of coordinator for the Jayhawks told us that they needed to get Jason Bean off to a good start. <laughs> Fair catch called by the Sooners. It'll be first down and 10. Scoreboard back on, Quint. Yeah, power to the scoreboard. Both scoreboards and video board now back on. 5.45 in the clocks. Both coaching staff's headsets fully functional. Looks like we're on our way. All right, the utility company, or whoever, whoever was involved in getting the situation rectified, did a great job, so we're back with power and 532 to go in the first quarter. Caleb Williams, maybe the biggest story in college football right now. True freshman out of Washington, D.C. Took over the reins of the offense a week and a half ago in that OU Texas game. Completes the pass here to the backup slot, Drake Stoops. Spencer Rattler on the right being usurped as the starting quarterback. 13-yard gain on the play. Caleb Williams came in and saved the day for Oklahoma. 21-point comeback against Texas last week, solidifying his position with a convincing performance, 18 of 23 against TCU. Hands it off here to Brooks. Up down by Gavin Potter. What do you like about what Caleb Williams has done in this short sample so far, Robert, on the season? It has been a short sample, but my oh my. He has been going out there, letting that dog hunt. He's been playing with reckless abandon like he's got nothing to lose. And he's special, right? The way that he plays the game is going to create a reaction out of this team that Spencer Rattler just can't provide. Second and nine. Williams hands it off again to Kennedy Brooks. Brought down by Logan. Third down coming up for Oklahoma. And listen, when I say about that spark that he provides that Rattler doesn't, it's not that he Rattler can't throw the ball. It's the, all about the running aspect that Caleb Williams brings. It opens up the entire offense for everybody. And because he's out there playing like he has nothing to lose, he's giving his receivers 50-50 ball opportunities down the field. And boy, are they feasting on those. Eric Gray in a tailback, third and four. A blitz coming, and he's sacked back at the 36. They lit him up. And a big-time sack. They're going to get him off the field. Kyron Johnson. And it's fourth down. That's their fifth sack of the season. I'm going to watch him right here. He's going to come and blitz. Kyron Johnson, they talked about him all week, and they said he's a guy. He's an effort guy. He's got talent. We wish we had three or four more of them because he can do his job and everybody else's. And what do you know? When you're playing a team like Oklahoma, your best players have to show up, and boom, there's number 15, Kyron Johnson, right on cue. Michael Turk averaging almost 52 yards per punt. 
one of the best punters in the nation right now. A high spiral that will carry him into the end zone. It'll come back out first down and ten on a Robert's cell phone chargers will cause the power outage. Well, I can tell you that it that it wasn't Matt. <laughs> Uh, he, he, he got a lot of juice on his own. Short gain on the play on first down. Jason Bean off to a great start. The transfer from North Texas. Arriving on campus just seven months ago. And slowly ingratiating himself to his teammates. When he first got here, he was very reticent. Didn't say much. But as time went on, began to get to feel more comfortable and has won over that locker room and the huddle. And handed off again, keep it on the ground. That's Tory Lachlan with the carry. Picks up a yard, it'll be third and long. When you talk about Jason Bean and how he first came to campus, they said he used to introduce himself as just Bean. Right. And they'd be like, what do you mean, Bean? That's cool. Jason Bean, I'm like, what are you, J are you James Bond? You're introducing yourself as just Bean? I like that. Hey, I like that a lot. He'll have a lot of nicknames and a lot of doors open for him if he makes something special happen here this afternoon. <laughs> 36 Lassiter in motion. A little trips right formation. Delivers complete for the first down. They move the chains again. Lassiter has been one of his favorite targets here early. Came into the game, the team's leading receiver with 21 receptions. Picked up nine yards on that. And look at that. This first quarter is almost done. Yeah, they, they talked about wanting to win quarters, right? And they're a minute away from winning the first quarter here against Oklahoma. When you talk about Kwame Lassiter, looking at his yardage and his receptions, he's a chain mover for Jason Bean. He's a, a security blanket. And right now, Jason Bean's throwing the ball with accuracy. He's using his legs. Everything they talked about wanting to do, they're doing right now. They run it again. Nice move outside. Neal on the move. Neal ready to deal and pushed out of bounds at the 25. The Jayhawks firing on all cylinders right now offensively. A 44 wow. yard scamper here. Look Robert. at this. They bring the receiver in, get the safety block. Devin Neal gets to the edge, and he's rumbling, stumbling, bumbling down the sideline. Wow, what a play by Devin Neal. From Lawrence, Kansas, just down the street. 5'11 freshman wanted to come here and make something special happen. 13 seconds to go in the quarter. Keeps it. Bean keeps those legs firing and pushed out of bounds finally by Pat Fields. Let's see where they spot this. He came close to picking up another first down. They're going to move it back though. Picked up six. And that's going to be the final past couple of weeks. A look of assurance etched across his countenance right now. No worries right there as he gets ready to take the field. Shortly, but right now the story is about the Kansas offense as Devin Neal picks up a couple of yards. They lead seven to nothing. Robert, they won the first quarter, which was the goal. They want to win quarters. They want to stack quarters. Short-term goals. They're they can check that box off. They can definitely check that box, and they're trying to make sure that the, the merit in the work that they've been doing shows up. And right now, it is. They're controlling the clock. They're actually controlling the line of scrimmage, which is something that not many people thought they would be able to do coming into this game. 33 keeps it himself. Bean got the first down and slides in safely at about the seven yard line. First and goal for the Jayhawks on the five yard run. At this point in the game, replay, instant replay is back up and running. At this point, instant replay is back up and running. You see here, Jason being on the mesh point, boom, makes the defensive end, make a decision, gets out and go. And this is something that the Sooners have struggled with. Athletic quarterbacks who can run, and not just kind of fast. This guy is fast, fast, right? He's a runner. He's a track star out there. And they are having some trouble corralling him and keeping him inside the pocket. 
The Sooner defense on its heels right now. Run it again, Neal between the tackles, picks up about four on the play. Stutzman making the tackle for the Sooners. That offensive line doing a nice job. And just a few moments ago, the lead official telling everybody that the replay booth and TV replay booth officials were back and operational. After that power outage campus wide a moment ago, the video scoreboard is back as well. Kansas has run 22 plays. This is going to be 23. Oklahoma just five. Keeps it again. Bean to the edge. Touchdown. They are giving the Sooner defense that work right now, but there's a flag down at about the three-yard line. Let's see if it stands. Uh, looks like it's going back. Whenever you see those offensive linemen walking backwards, they know what's up. Holding, number 54, offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. It's going to go against Michael Ford. Mm. They were driving the car nicely, yeah. right? And then Mr. Ford there had to put a yeah. break to all that. But still, still have an opportunity here. Offensive line otherwise doing a great job. When you look at last year, they gave up nine sacks in this game to Oklahoma. So, we're going to say, so far, not only they're not giving up sacks to protecting the quarterback, they are running the ball with extreme success against the Oklahoma on the front, which has created havoc for a lot of people. Second and 12. On the jet sweep, they'll hand it off to Lachlan. And Lachlan is brought down after a four-yard gain just inside the 10. Third down and goal. What do you like in terms of a play call here, Robert? When you sit here and you've got Jason Beanie's playing well, this is an obvious passing situation, third and eight. If you play it safe and don't trust him in this moment, you run the ball. But if you can trust him and say, hey, you're playing well right now, we're going to give you an opportunity to make a play, make a throw, I like the fact that they might try to attack with Trevor Wilson, number seven, if he's out there on the field right now. So they can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. He's not out there right now, so look for him to work this up top. Hand it off and nowhere to go. Lachlan got stopped immediately. Downs in on the stop for the Sooners, and they get the defense off the field. Benito, right there, number 11, making the tackle. The leader of the defense, one of them, on a Fort Lauderdale floor. St. Thomas Aquinas, fourth down coming up, and in comes Jacob Borsilla. Right there, it looked like uh, Jason Bean should have pulled that on the zone read that they ran. Just trying to play it safe, get the points, go up by 10 if they can make this year. No problem with that at all. Four seven on the year. Make it five of eight. Inner offense to get on track. They've only had a small opportunity so far. They've only run five plays, folks, if you're just joining us. Fair catch called, first and ten. From all right, thanks a lot, Matt. Back here, first and ten. Caleb Williams, the top-ranked quarterback in the class of 2021. Getting the start again here, his second start. Made his first last week against TCU. They're going to run it. And a nice hold for Kennedy Brooks. Picks up a first down at about the 37. Kenny Logan Jr. making the tackle in the secondary. But a 12-yard gain for Brooks, who's really found new life with a new quarterback, Caleb Williams. He's almost got more rushing yards since Caleb Williams became the starter than before that. You see it right at first five games, 63.6 rushing yards in the last 285. He's really turned it on after opting out last year. Williams pulls it out, taking a shot, got the post, and overshot his receiver, West. Wow, and he knew it. Oh, Trayvon West, wide open down the field. Maybe the wind here is a little bit different. Caleb Williams couldn't quite guide that one to him. He's been dropping dimes down the field all year. Look at him right here. He's like, oh, I got him. I got him. Oh, my Lord. What happened? You just missed him by a little bit, buddy. Sets up a second down and 10. Williams 
pulls it out again. Got plenty of time. Takes a shot downfield. It's up for grabs and picked off by the Jayhawks in the secondary. That's Ricky Thomas. Of the season. Again, six touchdown passes. First and ten. Coming back the other way. Bean fires. Complete to Lassiter, who's been his favorite target so far this afternoon. What a beginning for the Kansas Jayhawks. You'd have to go all the way back to October 26, 2019 to find their last conference win. It was about this weekend, two years ago, when they last beat a conference vote. And a very methodical Jason Bean looking over at the sideline. Play clock below 10. That's the formula today. Shorten the game. A little counter across the formation. And Devin Neal with no gain. Robert, what do you make of what's transpired so far? The mood, the result, especially on the sooner side of the ledger. It just seems like Oklahoma's asleep right now, right? They, they, they showed up. They, they're not awake. And, and Kansas is taking advantage of it. They're shortening the game. They're running the ball, owning the line of scrimmage. Jason Bean is playing out of his mind right now, being, you know, a distributor, throwing the ball, running the ball outside the tackle. And, man, man, oh, man, when you talk about Kansas and getting the results on the scoreboard, you see it happening right now. They're being relentless, and they have a belief in what they're doing. Bean overthrows Lassiter, had him, but it'll be third down. There is a lack of emotion on this Oklahoma sideline right now. Their fans showed up here. It's a five-hour drive north, but this team has not brought the juice, and this is the type of game with a 6.20 a.m. wake-up call, an 11 a.m. local kick. It's cloudy, it's chilly, it's 50 degrees. There's just a lack of energy, a lack of emotion, a lack of sense of urgency. Yeah, they've come from behind before this year, but they need a spark right now. They, they need something to turn the momentum of this game. A great point, Quinn. Remember, they trailed by 21 in that thrilling and thrilling comeback against Texas. Bean takes a shot. Complete midfield. That's Arnold making the catch. Lawrence Arnold. And that's going to be a first down on a 15-yard gain, Robert Griffin. You know, coming into this game, a lot of people said Jason Bean can't throw. He can't do this. And boy, is he showing everybody what he can do. On the move, keeps his eyes down the field, throws a dime down the field to Lawrence Arnold. Wow, Jason Bean is really playing at a high level. Last week he only had 86 passing yards, but this week he is leading Kansas right now in the first half to the lead over the Oklahoma Sooners. He's six of seven so far, 63 yards, and has run it seven times for 44. Hands it off again, and boy, look at Devin Neal. Put his hat down and bring some boom. Ran over a couple of Oklahoma players. Lawrence finally making the tackle after the eight-yard game. Well, this is what it looked like to start the contest. Jayhawks took the opening kick took their time they were very methodical and Jason Bean with that key run set up this touchdown run by Devin Neal it was seven nothing and they were on to something at that point we had a power outage and I tell you what Kansas turning on the juice right now here it goes again Bean that's going to be a penalty or maybe not looks like he Got him by the face mask or the collar. I think he got him underneath the face okay. mask in the front, so. My bad. No, no. It was a violent hit. You see it right here. He gets him underneath right. the face mask and, and grabs him by the neck. You know, maybe he, maybe he tackled him like that because he's a little frustrated. He's looking at the scoreboard, too, and he's like, is that thing working? Is it 10 to nothing right now? What's going on, man? Third and one. Yeah, we had a power outage for about five minutes. They were keeping the time down on the field with one of the officials. You know, the most impressive thing from Kansas offense right now is that they've been balanced. And you and me both know a balanced diet always starts. Several transfers with them here to Kansas. On third and short, they're not going to get it. They got stopped. Oh! oh, and they finally got it on a late surge. Wow. 
He hey. got a late push from some of his biggest and best friends. Look, he was, uh, they were banging their head against the wall there for a little bit. It's like, oh, it's done, it's done, it's done. They're like, no, buddy, we got you. We're going to push your own through there, okay? Now, when do officials decide to blow the whistle? How do you know when the guy stopped? They should have blown the whistle. Come okay. on. He was, he was stopped there, stood up straight up in the air. They were starting to levitate him like Jesus to, this car, to the clouds. Oh, wow. And they still let him keep going. Hey, it's just that type of day. And we got a timeout called by the Jayhawks with belief. He talks about relentlessness and pride. Part of the culture here, that pass incomplete for Lassiter. He was locked in on him the entire way there, it appeared, Robert. Incomplete. McCutcheon broke it up. Yeah, McCutcheon out there. He's playing because of some injuries that they've had in the secondary, but Jason Bean was locked on to Lassiter there. And, and when he's thrown it to him today, more times than not, it's worked out. So it's, it's kind of hard to blame him, but you don't want to telegraph a, a pass like that. From the 39, second down and 10. Play clock once again down below 10 seconds. Neal in the backfield. Takes the handoff. Maybe got half a yard on the play. Well, tomorrow is Sunday NFL countdown before they face off. Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff sit down to discuss their blockbuster trade. Plus, Randy Moss with his You Got Moss, best ones, best catches in college football and otherwise, and kick off your Sunday morning NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Talking about an awkward conversation. How about those two? Wow, I, I, I got I to hear that one and see that. That'll be interesting. Under six minutes to go. Oklahoma defense has spent a lot of time on the field in the first half here. Play clock at four. Bean wisely throws it away. Nobody open on that play. Corey Lachlan, the nearest receiver, and it'll be fourth down. That one never really seemed to have a chance, and for the first time this afternoon, Reese Vernon comes in to punt. No, they're, they're actually going to kick a field goal. Look at this. Okay, my bad. This is going to be a long one. Fifty-six yarder. You're getting the shoulders loose for this one. Let's call it fifty-seven. Got it up in the air, but he's going to pull it left. Mm. Didn't get those shoulders loose enough. And they won it 55 48, an instant classic. Ball start, number 71, offense, five yard penalty. Still first down. So the penalties have piled up against Lincoln Riley's crew. Three on defense, this one here on offense. And look at the difference in plays called so far and time of possession. This is the formula that uh, Kansas wanted to follow. First and 15 out of the shotgun, Williams. Completes it at about the 39-yard line. Drake Stoops working against Kenny Logan picks up five. It'll be second down. Sooners going with tempo here at the 39-yard line. They run it again. This time it's Brooks brought down by Gavin Potter. Gain of three. It'll be third down. The Sooners moving with urgency. And this is the problem when you go so fast, right? Kansas is trying to keep them off the field. Oklahoma loves to go fast when they get out there. But if you cannot sustain drives, you put yourself back on the sideline and it continues to keep you in a hole, in a rut. You guys don't get involved in the game. This is a big third down for them right here in the first half. They've got to get to the 49 to pick up the first. Williams surveys, fires, complete Hazelwood with a first down at the 41-yard line. Jaden Hazelwood, who had a big week last week with three touchdowns really emerging, he picks up 17, and he blew a tire. Guys, too. that was a filthy throw right there by Caleb Williams. They gave him all day. He scanned the field, found his guy, Jaden Hazelwood, right there with the dreads, right across the middle of the field. And what? He loses his shoe. Hey, Jordan Brand, man, get us some <laughs> shoes that can stay on, guys. Come on now. 
Ace up. First down and 10 from the 41. Williams keeps it. Backside heat. Great move to get away. And this is why they call him Superman. Williams making a little bit of magic with his feet. Tiptoes out of bounds at the 26, but there's a flag down way back at the 44-yard line. It was a missed tackle by Jeremy Robinson for Kansas as well. But that's the added dimension that Lincoln Riley really loves about his quarterback, Spencer Ratton, pardon me, uh, Caleb Williams. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, number 71. Mm. Offense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. It's still first down. As you said, that attic dynamic, right, of his feet. He's quick, strong, elusive. He even hit a Russell Wilson spin move back out. But right here, our guy number 71, Anton Harrison with the blindside block. Although at times Caleb Williams can make his offensive linemen look good even when they make mistakes, he's got to be smarter right there. He's already passed the plays over. There's no need for that block. Williams, a competitor, a guy that decided to come to Oklahoma despite the fact that Spencer Rattler was QB number one. Expected to be a high NFL draft pick. Brooks picks up about three. Under three and a half to go in the first quarter. We got another flag down on the play. Kansas, clearly the team right now playing with much more almost religious zeal oh, wow. and fervor. After the play is over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 54. Oh. Offense. Look at that. Penalty. Oh my count. goodness. Second down. That is not a pancake, Marquise Hayes. You cannot do that, right? Your team's already down 10-0. You don't need to be shooting yourself in the foot and, and putting your offense in an even worse situation. It's getting a little chippy out there right now. Maybe Oklahoma's a little upset that they're down 10 to nothing, but the way to get back into the game is not to commit personal fouls like this one. What is, what is, it, what is Black and Ricky Thomas there going to do? The play's already over. Now it's second and 37. Yeah, they got to get to Manhattan, Kansas to get a first down here. Williams. Throws a dart complete to Hazelwood again, and another flag. Three of them down in the field. That's going to be a face mask. Oh, wow. At about the 49. Yeah, it looks like Jeremy Webb there. Got a little bit of face mask there as he was trying to come in and make the tackle on Hazelwood. Mm, grabs it. Oh, and ahead the head. Oh, helmet to helmet. That might be, that might be targeting. Personal foul, face mask, number nine. Defense, 15-yard penalty and automatic first down. Oh, yeah, that's a 15-yard one. Right here, you see him. He just goes for the tackle, pulls the head, and then Rich Miller comes in. Almost looks like he launches at him, but it's like they're going to let that one go. <laughs> Sooners on the move here. Williams wisely throws it away. Nobody home, but it'll be second down and 10. This is not something you see often with a Lincoln Riley team. And they're going to say it's grounding because, well, he was in the pocket. Intentional grounding beyond the line number 13. Offense. There was no receiver in the area, and the quarterback was still within the tackle box. Well, there you go. Lost it down. There's, Second there's your explanation. It's going to come back. I would say that, that that's their explanation. But I don't know if I'd quite agree with that call there by the refs. They're running a screen. Caleb Williams sees that it's dead. So he throws the ball out of bounds in the vicinity. And he's got all three of those guys over there. That's an offensive lineman and two receivers in the area of the throw. Yeah, Drake Stoops is right there. Now, if you want to talk about was he trying to throw it to that guy? No, he wasn't. He was throwing it away. But as a referee, you have to understand that if the receiver is in the area, you can't throw that high. Well, they move it back nonetheless at the 48. On the crossing route, that's Mims. Mims, the team's leading receiver yardage-wise. Number 17. Gets a chunk of that yardage back. 
It'll be third down, about nine or ten to go. A 13-yard pickup by Mims. Yeah, they do a nice job just hiding Mims underneath, running a double cross concept. He is a big play receiver, but right now, yards is a good thing for this Oklahoma City offense. Look at that. They're going to have a procedure penalty against Oklahoma. Final snap, false start, number 27. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. That's against Jeremiah Hall. Eight penalties. A total of 66 yards for Lincoln Riley's team already. This is uh, very uncharacteristic of them. This is not the type of team that they are, but right, we, we talked about it with Quint earlier. They're just not awake right now. They're committing penalties. They're shooting themselves in the foot, throwing interceptions, getting turnovers. Defense isn't stopping anybody. They got to wake up quick, otherwise it's going to be a problem. They have more penalty yardage than passing yardage right now. Third and 12, Williams. Finds his receiver, that's Hall, but he's short of the first down, tackled by Jeremy Webb. And fourth down coming up with under two minutes to go. Let's see what Lincoln Riley does here. Williams is still on the field. And they're going to go for it here on fourth down from the 33-yard line, trailing 10-0. They're 5 of 7 on fourth down situations this year. Eric Gray in the backfield beside Caleb Williams. Williams surveying. Tells his receiver go downfield. Got him. Caught him. Incomplete to Eric Gray. Oh, is it? They're ruling a catch. Ruling on the field is a completed pass. First down. It's completed the three. What a catch. And we now they're it. saying incomplete. I was say, we got to see okay. if he caught that yeah. bad boy, but here it is. Eric Gray, the running back on the back. Ruling on the oh. field. Is an incomplete pass. He did not incomplete catch pass. it. Ball mm. goes over, first down. Yeah, right the first time, incomplete. Oklahoma's offense off the field, and that's why all these possessions become even more paramount. So mistakes like that, going for all fourth and six and not getting it, hurts you badly. Second and five. Running between the tackles and a nice game Neal. by Neal brought down by Asamoah. That's going to be the last play of a very stunning, surprising, somewhat shocking first half. As the Jayhawks lead it 10 to nothing. Continue it into the second half. The Oklahoma Sooners are going to have the football to start the third quarter. Kansas looking for the first conference win since two years ago. This weekend. Down. Play the game the way you've been playing the last game and a half, and you guys should be okay or at least have a chance to get back in this thing. Gonna hand it off to Brooks on first and ten. He'll pick up a yard. Caleb Williams missed a deep shot earlier in the game. Let's go down to Quint. Penalties and execution, the main issues for Oklahoma, according to their head coach Lincoln Riley. But I think those are just symptoms of a, of a widespread, more serious issue, and that is the lack of emotion. This team came out today, they were flat as a pancake. There's no, there's no mojo here, there's no vibe. Let's see if that changes in the second half. Williams has been a great catalyst right now, scrambling. Great second effort to make it out to the 30-yard line. It'll be third down after that gain of four, third and five. This Kansas defense, which is ranked, frankly, folks, near the bottom of a lot of the statistical categories, has limited this Oklahoma offense to less than double-digit plays almost so far this week. When they, come in, when they came into the game, they only had three sacks. Only two interceptions, and they've already racked up a couple of those in this game alone. This defense is one of the one that's ranked at the bottom, but it doesn't matter. You have to play the game every Saturday. And right now, they're playing at high level. Williams out of the shotgun again. Delivers a strike complete to Jeremiah Hall. Ball came loose. It's on the ground. No signal yet. Hall may have retrieved it, and the Sooners retain possession. As Kansas had a momentary opportunity, first and ten, Oklahoma. Man, close call. Oklahoma is playing with disaster today. You see it right here, Jeremiah Hall, 
H-back gets the catch and this fumbles. The guy just launches himself and hits the ball right away, and they are very, very lucky to have gotten that ball back. Wow. First and 10 from the 41, the toss into the boundary. This is going to be Brooks again, and Brooks stopped up after a gain of about two by Bryant. A historic first half here in Lawrence so far. First time Oklahoma has been held scoreless in the first quarter in a conference game in almost five years. Look at those couple firsts up at the top of your screen, and then Kansas, their first lead against a top five team in seven years. Yeah, there's a lot of firsts on that list. Yep. And they're really good for Kansas and not so good for Oklahoma and the Sooners. Looks like we've got Keenan Caldwell down in the field for the Jayhawks. <laughs> Famous fan in Lawrence, Kansas right now. <laughs> Second and eight for the Sooners after recovering their own fumble. Pass completed the 45. And that's going to go to Eric Gray. It'll be about two yards shy of the first down. Gain of seven on the play. Don't count this team out. Just down 10 nothing. Remember, Williams led them back from a three touchdown deficit against Texas. Third down and two. Four receivers out to the top of your screen. Little receiver screen complete. And a nice cut and run after the catch by Eric Gray to pick up the first down. You know, I had a chance to meet and speak with Caleb Williams' dad, Carl, and his mother, Dana Williams, at the hotel a little bit earlier today. You can see after speaking with those loving and doting parents where he gets his confidence from and his composure as well. Keeping his composure here and tiptoeing out of bounds. They'll lose a couple of yards. Gavin Potter there with the heat. Mm. You know, yeah, you were telling me that you had that uh, had an opportunity to speak with them, and I think that's really cool when the parents can show their support, travel with their with their sons and and daughters in college sports, and and really just show them that love that, uh, and you get to see really who they are, you know, yep. where they come from, their 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 background, and Caleb Williams is a is a great player with a bright future. Second and twelve, Farouk in motion now sets. Farouk on the catch. Made one tackler miss, and then Logan Jr. finally brings him down after a five yard gain. Well, now, time now for today's Athletic Trivia question. Who was the last true freshman to start at quarterback for Oklahoma? Hmm. True freshman. I know a lot of people are using Google right about now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good one. That is a good one. That's a Jamel Holloway. That's a tough one. Eric Gray in the backfield on third and seven. They got to get to the 28. Williams with a little audible. Fires complete down to the 22 yard line. They move the chains. Good catch by Drake Stoops. Working against Jason Gillum. He picks up 13. Stoops has uh, been called a couple of times this afternoon. Oklahoma going a little bit faster here. Williams hands it off. That's Eric Gray brought down by Gavin Potter. Picked up five. Oklahoma finding a little rhythm here, Robert. How are they doing it? Well, it's not just the going fast. They're also featuring Eric Gray right now. They've thrown it to him on a couple screens, thrown it to him out of the backfield, handing the ball off to him. Uh, he's, a, you know, he's a transfer from Tennessee. He scored his first touchdown last week. But I just like the consistency that they're working with. On third down right there, they make an audible, get the little out route with the go ball, and two routes coming across. It's just they're playing good football right now and executing. Williams hands it off to Brooks. Brooks wrapped up and lunging forward to pick up the first down. Great second effort as Dotson wrapped him up around the shoelaces. But it's first down for Oklahoma at the 12. You see right here, <laughs> Kennedy Brooks gets 
tackled, you know, two arms on the legs, you know, tackled in the open field. And that's not normally something that you see from him. And it's just a, a sign of how the day's been going. Oklahoma's had to work through a lot of uh, a lot of adversity today. And uh, normally Kennedy Brooks would make that guy miss, but good on Romello Dotson there to make that tackle in the open field. 12th play of the Sooner drive here. Brooks runs it into the boundary, cuts up. Broke a couple of tackles and pushed out of bounds at about the eight. Rich Miller finally bringing him down a four yard gain on the play. And Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley's crew on that side of the football looking like what we expected coming into this football game on this drive. That's their best drive of the game by far, right? Yep, easily. And the thing that just comes to mind is I'm talking to defensive coordinator Brian Boyle and he said he wanted to make Oklahoma earn everything they got today and that's exactly what they've done including on this drive they just got to try to stop them from getting seven second and five hands it off to Brooks again Brooks is tackled at about the five yard line by Nate Betts Sooners just rolling up their sleeves and going to work on this drive third down though Third and three coming up. Williams into the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Hazelwood again. He had three touchdowns last weekend, and it's first here this afternoon. Oh, man, Oklahoma comes out. After the half, puts together a nice drive. What they did there is they ran a little slot fade right there with Jaden Hazelwood with a with a known back shoulder throw. You could tell that him and Caleb Williams knew what they were going to do. Caleb Williams gets the snap, makes a nice throw, and they're back in this thing. Make this extra point here. It's 10 to 7, down by three, and uh, they can con try to just let all those worries from the first half go away. It's a great job for them. That was big time by the Oklahoma Sooners. 10-7 football game and after hitting the snooze button, not knowing that the game started at 11 o'clock local time, Oklahoma has arrived. They trail by a field goal when we come back. Logan Jr. back for this kick. It'll come out first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Jason Bean right now tasked with the appropriate response to that scoring drive by Oklahoma. How huge would it be if they could at least get a get some semblance of points on this drive Robert. They need it right. We talk about this Uncle Mojo. The momentum has kind of shifted to Oklahoma. Why because they came out put a drive together and got seven. Now Kansas has to answer here even with three points which show that they can they're still in this game as in the momentum side. Hands it off to his tailback in a bruising run by Devin Neal picked up about nine on that play and they're picking up where they left off in the first half running the ball owning the line of scrimmage Devin Neal two sport athlete here at Kansas as we talked about he's the local guy he's the local favorite the local hero. Hey, give him the ball. Let him go out there and show that answer and lean on this offensive line that's been playing great all game. Real big part of the personality of that offensive unit for Kansas. Neal makes it second down and one. Did he get another chance here? Picks up the first down and then some. Ball came loose, but he was already down. Robert, are you surprised at the amount of success they've had in running the football? I am a little surprised because no one thought that this Kansas offensive line was going to come out here and be maulers today. You know, that's the weakness of Oklahoma's defense is their ability to stop the run, stop it up front. And you see right here today, 30 rushes for 148 yards, averaging almost five yards a carry. This is what Texas did to them. This is what TCU did to them. But we weren't sure if Kansas quite had that strength up front. And they are showing the day that they got it. First and 10 from the 46. This time nowhere to go, but Neal got about two with his forward progress. 
Ryan Asamoah making the tackle on the play for Oklahoma. We haven't seen Kansas challenge that secondary that was victimized big time last week in that win against TCU. In particular, Jaden Davis was picked on. Quentin Johnston gave him work last week. Straight up. <laughs> He's keeping it a buck. Second and eight. Oh. We saw that in the first half a lot from that defensive front for Oklahoma. Offside, number 88. Defense jumped into the neutral zone, causing the offensive player to react. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's the fourth offsides penalty by Oklahoma's defense, and that's exactly what Lincoln Riley was alluding to when he spoke to Quint Kessnick a moment ago. Yeah, you see the guy right here, and you're like, why is he wearing number 88 anyway? Is he supposed to be on offense? That's it. Come on, Kelly. <laughs> you, you should know the snap count. You're wearing an offensive number anyway. I know we have double numbers in college football, but yeah, that, that was interesting. Under six minutes to go here in the third, second and three now. They run it again, Neal, and he's going to be brought down right near the line of scrimmage by Benito. Benito, we haven't called his name a whole bunch today. One of the leaders defensively from South Florida, St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the storied football programs down there in the Fort Lauderdale area. Former high school basketball player, he uses a lot of his uh, footwork and handiwork to make tackles and put a little bit of pressure on a quarterback. He did a great job spying quarterback Adrian Martinez several weeks ago. His agility in space. On third and three, trying to stay on the field. Complete for the first down and then some. Wilson, pardon me, Arnold with the catch. Lawrence Arnold moves the sticks. A huge conversion on third down. Mm -mm -mm. That was finger looking good. You got here Lawrence Arnold. He's running across the formation. Big, tall, linky guy. Throw it up, let him make a catch. He's trying to find the end zone, trying to get through, guys. Look at Jason Bean. He said, look, guys, I know I don't have 300 yards passing and four touchdowns today, but I've been effective throwing the ball, moving the chains, doing what the coaches are asking me to do. He is playing big time ball right now for what his coaches are asking him to do. Doing at a high level. Got to love him. First and 10. Fairchild across the formation, the pass complete. Quick receiver screen, oh, he stays on his feet. McBride with a little spin move, eluding one tackler and picking up another first down. Poor tackling by the Sooners on that 21-yard gain. Yeah, it'll make you shake your head a bit. The poor tackling is continuing to plague the Sooners right here. So remember, oh, spin move on the sideline, getting vertical. Man, these guys look like they're having a lot of fun out there today. And I know the Kansas faithful are excited for them. And still sticking to the formula, Robert, running the play clock now, taking their time. Orderly and methodical. Toss to the wide side of the field. Neal cuts it up. Gets down just short of the end zone at about the one, just inside the one. Yeah, he's saying, feed me. He say, wants it again. He's saying, feed me to rock. And this lack of tackling is continuing to be the bane of the Sooners' existence. Right here, Stephen McBride spin move on the sideline. Devin Neal gets the jet sweep toss, and he put, turns it up the field. And they're just missing tackles left and right. Man, you want to talk about a response. These Jayhawks are responding in a big way, moving the ball all the way down the field and doing what got them there. Telling numbers there. Rush yards. Now we got a flag down. Prior to the snap, false start, number 33. Offense, five yard penalty. Still second down. Boy, those are the plays you can't afford to have if you're the Jayhawks with such a slim margin of error. That's only their third penalty, though. They've been very disciplined so far today. They have, and you know, they bring in Spencer Rowe there, and he you know, goes a little prematurely. You know, maybe he's a little excited. You know, they're moving the ball down the field against Oklahoma Sooners, but as you said, you can't have those type of penalties. It pushes them back here, but. You know, they've got a couple more downs to make up those yards, those yards and get in the end zone. Second goal from 
just outside the eight. Bean on the run. Into the end zone, his receiver fell. No flag, and it'll be third and goal coming up, intended for Cardell. He might have actually had Trevor Cardell there if he didn't fall down. But right here, he, he just throws a my guy or nobody ball. His guy falls down. Luckily, the Oklahoma Sooner guy right there, uh, Joshua Eaton, doesn't have hands. He can't catch it. Uh, Jason Bean got away with one there. He must be living right. Third and goal. They were able to convert last time on the big third down. Let's see what they do here. Their child, their tall receiver, number two to the top of your screen. Bean on a predetermined run, tucks it up. Bean! He didn't get in, just shy of the end zone, literally inches away. Oh, so close. Fourth down. So fourth and inches. And what does Coach Live pull do? Look at him. Boom. Oh, go the other way, get vertical, and yep, just down short of the goal line. Right here, boom. Yeah, right down. there, right there, man. Good call. Just down. What do you do? They're so, going for it, baby. Devin Neal has been a workhorse for them. Play clock already at five. Neal, touchdown, Jayhawks. He's in. He's there on the sidelines. Looked like he was hit. Basketball. <laughs> it's a football school. <laughs> 130 to go in the third quarter. Let's see what Oklahoma's response is on the reverse. West taking it downfield, got a lane in an alley, and off to the races. West inside the 10, first and goal Sooners. What an answer by them. Webb saved the touchdown on the play, and they got back a huge chunk. Well, if you're trying to get back in the game, this is how you do it. Lincoln Riley said, I'm pulling all the, the tricks out the bag. He gives it to Trayvon West. And you see here, and he's running down the field, and oh, there's a hold right there. Oh, they might have got away with one right there. I know the, Sooner, the Boomer Sooner and all the Sooner Nation is happy that the ref didn't call that one. But wow, you want to get back in the game quick, do a reverse, run it down the field, get in the, get in the red zone. Intent on the face of Caleb Williams from the nine. Hands it off to Brooks. He's tied up right near the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard on the play. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Kansas up 10 on the number three team in the country who this year have seemingly specialized in comebacks. 7-0. and They got a clean sheet so far this year. But they flirted with danger on several occasions. And doing it again here this afternoon. They came in a prohibitive favorite. Williams pulls it out. Caught touchdown hole. Their second touchdown of the third quarter. And right there, you just see how the threat of run by Caleb Williams and how effective the running backs have been draws the linebackers up and allows Jeremiah Hall to sneak right on by. Whew. We got us a doozy, don't we? What about that? 14 seconds to go for Hall. Right there, a fourth touchdown catch this season, 12th of his career. Williams, much more focused. Oh, I'm smiling right now. Oh, he ain't smiling at all. Extra point good, back to within a field goal, 17 14. Well, we asked you earlier, as we re re academically, athletically, a development plan for their son. He moved to Norman early, Williams did, on the kickoff return. Oklahoma with Good coverage. We started recruiting other players. Flag down to the field. Caleb Williams started calling up other four and five star recruits saying, hey, maybe you want to join me here in Norman, Oklahoma. And at the time, remember, he was QB number two. Yes, he was. It speaks to his concept of team. And his confidence, you know? Anytime you commit somewhere where they already have a guy like a Spencer Rattler, mm -hmm. and in your own class, you already have a guy committed. It just shows how Outside, much you believe in yourself. Five. 
kicking team. Five yard penalty. They will re-kick the ball. They're gonna re-kick it. So we'll tee it back up, literally and figuratively. <laughs> Spencer Rattler, QB number two right now. Usurped on the depth chart in wake of that Texas game. And, uh, and also want to also want to say just for Spencer Rattler and watching him throughout the game and how he's gone about being a leader on the sideline right. in the midst of of this team going through some adversity right right that's big on him because he could easily check out and say you know what coach bench me I don't want to be a part of this he's there for his guys he's supporting Caleb Williams you love to see that from a young guy and no matter what happens for him in the future uh, you root for guys like that. Great because uh, Lincoln Riley is very intentional in pointing out that Spencer Rattler had a great week last week and would have been ready to play and would have played well if given the opportunity to turn out to the. Wow, what a game. Meanwhile, back here on first and 10. That's going to be Devin Neal, who already has two touchdowns today for the Jayhawks. That's the last play of the third quarter. 45 minutes in the books. And you're looking at the comeback kid, Caleb Williams. He's done it before. Does he have another miracle in him for Lincoln Riley and the Sooners? Ranked number three. The Jayhawks looking for the upset when we come back to Lawrence for the fourth. Town, come on down. And they have. Trying to witness something historic and special here. And a big hit on defense. What a play by Ogwebu. Trevor Wilson. Ball carrier. See here, Trevor. Oh, you can hear that from a mile away. Trevor Wilson's like, man, I'm a wide receiver. Why they got me right here running the ball, getting hit like this? But it does appear that Oklahoma's defense has woken up, and they're playing with a lot of energy. Man, why'd they have to wait for things to get yeah. bad before they got good? Jane Witter also went on the tackle for the Sooners. Third down and eight. Had a big conversion in the previous quarter on third down. Blitz coming. And he finds his receiver. It's dropped by Arnold. Wow. Mm. You see them here. They bring the blitz late. Add on blitz right there. Jason Bean uses his legs. Gets outside the pocket. And Lawrence Arnold drops the ball. Now, he's not going to get the first down. He's short of the first down. But at least it puts them in a situation where they get more yards. And in that moment right there, if you're Kansas, you need him to make that play. Yeah, maybe you're still punting because you're not going to go for it on fourth down in your own territory. But at least it's still positive energy and momentum for you. This is just the second punt of the afternoon for Vernon. And it's a returnable one to Mims. Marvin Mims across midfield. Good starting field position. Based on their body of work. Here's Caleb Williams back to pass, slings it into traffic, incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. You noted earlier that he's thrown it into traffic and gotten some very auspicious results on 50 50 balls. That time, Stonger was the intended receiver. Yeah, sometimes when you throw the ball down the field, and you, you just throw it like you have nothing to lose, you're praying and hoping that your receivers will make those plays for you. Right there, he kind of threw it out of bounds. Maybe it was a little bit of a throwaway. But if he threw it in bounds, number one, Kenny Logan is a ball hawk. He was going to make a play on that one for sure. On second down, Williams finds his receiver out of the backfield. Brooks on the move. Got a blocker ahead of him. Brooks brought down finally at the 24-yard line. Got a great block on the play from Tyrese Robinson. Well, our Week 7 Monday Night Football matchup has the Saints coming off the bye in Seattle, taking on the Seahawks. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. ESPN 2 will have Monday Night Football with Peyton and Eli Manning. Coverage begins Monday Night Countdown, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific time. A 24-yard gain on that previous play. First and 10 from the 24. I guess on that Monday night football when you got Jameis trying to eat some more W's, huh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> However he wants to serve him up. Williams pulls it out, finds his receiver across the formation. Nice run by Gray. Gray close to the end zone, pushed out of bounds. At about the two-yard line, Eric Gray. 
But a nice move on Jeremy Webb to pick up another 23. It'll be first and goal from the one. See here, Eric Gray's having him a nice, solid game, catching the ball and running it. Almost gets into the end zone, but there's that man I was talking about, Kenny Logan Jr., knocking him out of bounds, flying all around the field, and he was a little slow to get up as they're going over to check on him right now. That would be a really big loss for them if he's out. Yeah, he had a big afternoon so far. Quint? The beginning of the game. That way you're not in this situation that you're in right now. But we got to give credit to Kansas. They have played really well today. Brooks in the backfield. Takes the handoff and scores a touchdown Sooners with their first lead of the afternoon. They've got a flag down on the play. Let's see if it stands. Flag back at the four yard line. Looks like it's going to be a personal foul on OJ Burroughs. Had a little fist fight there with one of the receivers from Oklahoma. Brooks, it'll be his eighth rushing touchdown of the After season. The play is over. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number five. Defense. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. That is number five's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Well, Brooks, who had the touchdown here. Yeah, you see it right here. You're going to watch. They always get the second guy. He kind of holds him a little bit. He gets his hand off him. Man, what you doing? Hits him in the face. Jaden Hazelwood's laughing. Because yeah. he knows, hey, man, you just hurt your team. That second one was really unnecessary. They do this a lot. They like playing with fire. <laughs> After the penalty, it'll be first and ball back. First and 10 from the 47. Williams hands it off to Brooks. Brooks keeps those legs moving, picks up about eight on the play. It'll be second down and two. Man, Key Lawrence, he got the keys, 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 right? How about that? That was uh, exactly what the doctor ordered for Oklahoma. You see the look on his face. He's like, come on, man. What are we doing out here? He's making plays. He punched that ball like he like he really, really meant that one. Took his cornbread. Second and two. Brooks in the backfield. Comes across the formation. They're going to be brought down for a loss of one on the play. So third down and about a long three coming up. Jeremy Robinson right there in on the stop. And the Jayhawks defense needs to get off the field here. It's a tall task, a, a big ask of this defense. As we showed you the numbers earlier, they're ranked in the bottom in a lot of areas. But today they have played well. But in the second half, they haven't stopped the Sooners yet. They need to right here if they want to have a chance. Let's see who the go-to is for the Sooners in this critical spot. Williams kept it, pulled it out, and fires incomplete. Good coverage and well defended and good pressure from Johnson. Kyron Johnson right there, number 15, makes it fourth down. You talked about Kyron Johnson, and in these moments, your best players have to show up. But look at these guys out here. They are blanketed in coverage. Jeremiah Hall, nobody's getting it to him. And Caleb Williams tried to extend the play as much as he could with his legs like he has, and here they are going on, fourth on fourth down, play. going for it. Brooks in the backfield. And the play clock's going to run out. Maybe just trying to draw him offside. Fourth and three. Trying to have this upset come to fruition. Williams keeps it on the quarterback. Counter. Gets the first down. Still on his feet. The Magic Man pulls out the Magic Wand. Touchdown Sooners. Oh, he's a runner. He's a track star. Look at him out there going. <laughs> Breaking tackles, very reminiscent of his fourth and one touchdown run for 66 yards against the Texas Longhorns. But right here, look, just confidence on his face. Uh, arm tackles, man, you gotta be kidding me. He runs through there, rumbling, bumbling, touchdown. He says, I am here, Superman. That's what they call me. Wow, Caleb Williams puts a silencer on the crowd here in Lawrence, Kansas. With another 
cardiac comeback. But a turnover leading to a Caleb Williams sprint for a touchdown. And the Sooners outscoring the Jayhawks. 28 to 7. Really having a, uh, you know, surging up the list of the Heisman and, and draft boards since he's raised playing this year. Pass complete to the 40 yard line and then some. Bean hits Lassiter. Lassiter tiptoes out of bounds. 7.45 to go, down 11. They're going to move with a little bit of tempo. They can't stick to the original script oh, now, right, No, Robert? no, no, no. They no can't more running stick. down the play clock. They can't run the play clock down anymore. But they're sending the play in, going to the huddle, but they're going to move a little bit faster here. And they're going to have to attack this secondary, which they felt like was the weakness of this defense, as you saw right there, Josh Whedon chasing Kwame Lassie, who picked up 28 yards on that last play, 7.20 to go. Well, the play clock below 10. Mm. Don't like that. He throws a strike complete for the first down. That's Grimm. Grimm had a nice pass catch and run a little bit earlier. Another first down with a little over seven minutes to go. I'm surprised, Robert, that he took so long in between plays. I am a little surprised, but I'm very impressed with the route that Luke Grimm just ran. He turned the defender all the way around on that slant. Hmm, he put some stank on that thing. <laughs> okay. Fire. 11 yard gain on that last play. A little bunch formation to the left. They're going to run it though. That's Devin Neal, a top ranked boxing tonight from Atlanta. Big time card, Robert. You're a big boxing guy. What do you think uh -huh. of, of these matches? Uh, Muhammad Ali's grandson, Nico, returning to the ring after winning his professional debut in August. Card starts 10 30 Eastern on ESPN. The Cortez, the app, one app, one tap. Oh, we we know, know to start at 7 30 Eastern. We know that fight is all about Shakur Stevenson, the young god out there, man, doing his thing. Lassiter with another good pass, catch, and run inside the 15. Hey, they're moving down the field with brevity here. 19 yard game. Bean, touchdown! Justin Boyles was the closest defender about seven yards away from him. I don't even know if you go that close. And go for two, as I said. With a kneel in the backfield. They make it a field goal game here. They run the reverse. Lasseter hesitated, and he's not going to get in. The Sooners will stop him cold. And it's a five-point game, not a field goal game. Scoring drive, and we've just seen has been 10 or more plays and using over six minutes on the clock. They kick it deep and it will roll into the end zone. Hey, they're racing to try and recover that thing, they weren't that far off. Hey, man, he almost got that to stop on the one thing earlier in the week about being surprised by the thickness and strength of his lower body, his ability to run as well as he does. And he, Demonstrated it there as he does here. Williams gliding and hit, stays in bounds wisely. Picks up about 13 on the play, first and 10 with 5.45 to go. You know, you talk about uh, Lincoln Riley and talking about just the way that Caleb Williams is built. And, you know, I never never heard somebody say that thick legs was a bad thing. Right. You know? Okay. Especially at the when you're running the ball. Running back, quarterback position allows you to be more elusive, strong out there on the field. Hands it off this time to Kennedy Brooks. And Brooks picks up about six yards on the play. 5.17 to go. Oklahoma looking to go 8-0 and for the first time since 2004. This is how it started in 2019 for Spencer Rattler. And this is how it's going right now for Caleb Williams top recruit last year didn't get a chance to really have his coach Lincoln Riley come see him because of COVID but he visited Norman and was convinced that this was the place for him despite the fact that Spencer Rattler was already QB1 and a highly acclaimed quarterback number one right we thought we were going to see 
Spencer Rattler today. Right? I think, Honestly, I, right? I think a lot of people <laughs> thought they were going to see Spencer Rattler today. But Kansas had other plans. And let's not get it twisted. It's third and one here. He's still got four minutes left in this ball game. Kansas is not out of it yet. Oklahoma has to make sure they finish. They have been great finishers this year. They got to continue that today. Brooks will have the opportunity. Stopped up. The intransigence of the Jayhawk defense coming up huge here. It sets up fourth and short. Ruling on the field as the runner was short of the line of game. Fourth down. Boy, that tells you that the Jayhawks have not let go of the rope. And they, when the coaching staff talks about being able to point to stuff besides the final score in building culture and in a winging environment, they got a clip right there. Yes, they did, and they have been relentless for 60 minutes. They said, hey, when something doesn't work, don't panic. Just keep trying, and that's exactly what they're doing. You got to commend them for that. Third and one. Brooks this time spins off one. They get stopped. No, he, Williams took it out of his arms magically. What a play, leaving the Jayhawks shocked in his wake. How did Caleb Williams do that? Unbelievable. You talk about a timely, intelligent play. Caleb Williams says, I'll take that, thank you. He says, hey, give me that right there. He takes it from him to get the first down on fourth and one. Oh, my. You know, look at this. Previous play of a first down is under further review. Yes. Menem, but it's also, it's almost like a, a forward handoff here, right? He's taking the ball from it, and it's not a fumble. It's not like he fumbled that away. So would you consider that as like a forward lateral? Hmm. Going to take a minute to unpack this and absorb what happened. Brooks was stopped. <laughs> this is exciting stuff. Here's the call. After reviewing the play, there was a legal forward handoff behind the line of scrimmage. Therefore, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Oklahoma. Wow. wow. Okay, there it is. Look at that. Because it happened behind the line of scrimmage, it was illegal. It was a legal one. And Man, Caleb, Caleb Williams, Williams with the presence of mind, the intelligence to grasp the ball. A precocious, true freshman takes the ball from his teammate Brooks there and says, let me get the first down. The crazy thing is Rich Miller driving him back behind the line of scrimmage actually helped the play. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't thinking that at the time. Here's Brooks. Leaving in traffic, brought down gain of about one on the play. Timeout called by the Jayhawks. No matter what the outcome, you can see why his teammates naturally gravitate towards him. Great leader by example again here around the edge and tiptoes out of bounds. Under three minutes to go. This is the big play a moment ago. Brooks held up. Williams takes it from him and runs for the first down and then you, yeah you watch him here off the zone read he's just faster than everybody else the way he's built you wouldn't think that oh this guy's fast but he is a strong runner he's got sweet feet Could've, I mean, he wanted to stay in bounds there but the clock is still running and he's fine i, I think maybe he thinks he's already in the nfl where well, they stop the clock when you're <laughs> right that might be his ultimate stopping point 15 to 20 passing Doing it with his legs again here on first and ten. And this time wisely stays in bounds. Kansas with two timeouts remaining. Instill pride in us for wearing those colors. But he is doing that here at Kansas for sure. Brooks breaks through the initial wave and pulled down at about the 11-yard line. 2-10 to go. Brooks with some pretty good numbers today. Picked up seven on that game. Remember, he had consecutive 1,000-yard-plus rushing seasons prior to sitting out last year with the COVID exemption. Today has run 21 times for 75 yards and a touchdown.
Williams hands it off to Brooks again. Just tiptoeing and dancing between the tackles, brought down for a gain of about two on the play, and Kansas is going to be forced to burn their final timeout pretty soon here. There it is. Brooks down to the four. Under a minute and a half to go, Kansas out of timeouts. The plan was perfect for the Jayhawks. And you think about the turnovers that ultimately did them in, Robert. The punch strip by Oklahoma, the recovery that led to the Caleb Williams touchdown run. And then another turnover a moment ago, which kind of sealed the deal for Oklahoma. Who was lifeless and listless and impotent in that first half and woke up in the third quarter scored on the opening drive and changed the tenor of this football game brooks why not one more touchdown and the sooners with a little icing doing a little bit of straightening right now mm, mom and dad there fans have made the trip from norman oklahoma Big Hop fans probably knew what was going to hit them at some point, and it happened. Second rushing touchdown for Brooks today. Did you see Bean, Bean played a good football game? Bean did play a good football game, and I was saying, did you just see the way Brooks, Kenny Brooks, just ran through that hole? He he baptized that event, the defender sitting there at the goal line as he went into the end zone, yeah. playing with a physicality that you haven't sight of those said slaves that helped build his school in Washington, D.C. And he brought home some of the football. Teams. I don't think there's any doubt about that now. Again, 15 of 20 passing. And he's going to run out the clock here. Jason Bean runs out of bounds. On the flip side of things, Spencer Rattler will wait. We expected him to play today because as I said earlier Oklahoma came in a prohibitive favorite I think it was about six touchdowns almost yes and Spencer Rattler we were thinking we'd see him but not the case this game a lot more competitive than we thought so he will wait and Nick Riley has been effusive in his praise of Spencer Rattler while he's QB number two saying that hey you know what he's had Two great weeks of practice, and he would play well if he was in there too. Yeah, I think the way I can't praise Lincoln Riley enough for the way he has handled this situation, right? It's unfortunate, it's awkward, it's every superlative you can imagine for Spencer Rattler and Caleb Williams. But when you have a head coach who supports his players, understands the delicacy with which you need to handle this type of quarterback situation when you have two high profile guys it makes it a little bit easier and i think it just speaks volumes about the type of coach and person that lincoln riley is that he is going out of his way not only to praise spencer rattler but also to temper expectations for caleb williams everybody wants to talk about his arm and his legs and everything that he's doing and he's putting it on tape it looks incredible but lincoln riley is making sure he keeps everything in perspective well that'll probably do it with that last play Jason Bean had a good day, nothing to be ashamed of with the way he performed today. A transfer from North Texas, 16 to 22, touchdown, 217 yards, did some great things running the football as well, just not quite enough. And listen, in the loss, Jason Bean had a bounce back game throwing the ball, running the ball. He is a guy that they can lean on for the rest of the year as they continue to build out their program and get the results on the field. This will be the final play. He'll air it out. And appropriately ends the game with a completion to Lawrence Arnold. But this one's over. Caleb Williams leads Oklahoma from a halftime deficit to a 35-23 victory. They improved to 8 0 for the first time since 2004. Whether it's a look of confidence, a smile, or not, he gets it done in the end. Let's go downstairs to Quinn. Coach, congratulations. The guys found a way uh, again. What was most responsible for the comeback? 
Uh, we played a little bit better in the second half. Didn't have as many uh, any many penalties. Got a little bit of momentum there with the team. You know, we're still we're still working through it. You know, we just we, we haven't found a way to play as consistent as we need to. We found ways to win games, which is great. But we know our best ball has got to come here pretty quick. How do you describe the play of your quarterback, Caleb Williams? Uh, a little unsettled in the first half. Uh, didn't play great in the first half. Was much better in the second half. Have you ever seen a play like he made in that fourth down conversion at the end, where he took the ball from a teammate? I mean, uh, I've been watching football a long time, coach. I've never seen anything like that. Play. You got some smart guys that know when it's those. You know, we talk about those situations, and really, you kind of got nothing to lose when something like that happens so you know really smart player and Kennedy Brooks making a smart play Caleb right there I mean he made big plays when we needed it congratulations coach